The tear-up merchant would always fight in the gap of a split second. Were the two halves are presented. Good or bad choices. He or she has the fight in nature to block the bad and fight no matter what obstacle for the good. These lights shine in self-love. They will stand for it. These are the ones that will have a tear up. Believe. Believe. It's a very exciting project to be involved with. I'm, I'm honoured. Your background is fantastic. Um, your conditioning is good. Your technique is good. Yeah. So for really, for someone like myself, coming into, I'm not starting from scratch. It's like building a building. I'm, I haven't. You've already got the foundation. All I'm going to do is paint the walls the colour of my choice. That's easy. John Charles is a real good trainer. I've, uh, I've been there before one time. We've, uh, we've trained, it was really exciting. It felt like, almost like our own gym, you know? One, two, three, slip, boom, roll, pop out. Yes, yeah, so speed. Come on. There it is, at the hook. It's not too fancy, just we're there to train and to work hard. You know, that's how the gym looks. And that's how that felt like home. It's, uh, it's like a, a dream came out for me. Because I like uh, every uh, thing of sport. Yes, that's the timing. Again. Nice. <laughs> if I look on the internet how Floyd is living and the way he do things, and I think, whoa, that's really cool. And I'm young, and my dream is also to get like them. So for me, it's uh, I want to start. The way we fight, the way they fight, they do want to destroy, and that's not boxing. Boxing, you have to move, 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 you know, footwork. And so I think if we can change them in their head, you know, and then we have a real good chance to create champions, really. Okay. Because our firepower is more than the boxers. I think, I don't know any boxer, okay, I don't talk about professional like uh, Mike Tyson, but I don't know any boxers who are hitting harder than the way we train. Most of the time when we box the boxers here, we hit much and much harder. Really, much and much harder. I don't say that the boxers don't hit hard. Don't get me wrong. But when we compare with average boxer and average Muay Thai fighter, we hit harder. Really. Lishan Carbin is a uh, really, really smart trainer. One of the best in the world. And uh, when Lishan Carbin is with me, I can do everything I want without to looking at him. When I'm in the ring, I only need to, to hear his voice. When I hear his voice, then it's like a computer game. He, I'm playing in the game, but he's uh, moving me in the game. So I really trust him like a trainer, like a coach, like a father, like everything. He's a really smart person. When, when he look at something, you look at it in different ways, so, and he think a lot. When he see something, he don't go to get it. First, he gonna look from different ways, and when he see his uh, 
way to get in, then he get in. Training with him, I feel like I'm really blessed as like a person that wants to fight in Thai boxing, that I'm uh, training with one of the best trainers or not the best trainer, you know, with technique, whatever. There's nothing that anybody else in the fighting sport is doing that he doesn't know about. He knows everything about it. Do you think he's going to be a good boxing trainer? I don't think it. I know it for sure. If I'm with Lucien and Lucien is training me, and we're going to train a lot, in, not in the way of kickboxing, but boxing, I think I'm going to be a, a real champion in boxing. When I have Don Charles with me and Lucien Carbin, I think nobody can stop me. Everybody already knows in England that Don Charles is or somebody that can uh, turn, a, how do you say, a street guy into a, a real good fighter. So, or a, or a guy that is not wanted by anybody and can turn him around into a, a much better fighter than he uh, ever dreamed of being. So, I'm glad that I'm uh, gonna be a part of that too. So I just decided to get together with some friends, Sergio, Aziz, Oligar, who's a filmmaker, Lucian Carbin, Charles, and whoever else would help us do this journey. And so we're starting from basically scratch. Yeah, I think they've both got a lot of talent. They've both obviously been kickboxing now. They've got that transformation into the boxing ranks, which is different, you know, the movement is more fluent. But I think that definitely they've got potential, yeah. No, I think that we've seen it before. We've seen successful kickboxers turn boxers and become world champions. So, you know, it's not a strange thing. They do it out in Thailand all the time. And, you know, I think that, I don't think it's a crazy journey, no. I think that it's, um, it's an adventurous one, an exciting one. Boys, how are you finding it so far? It was, it was hard, nice. but uh, it was good. Yeah? Sure. Good. There's a, it's a lot of hard work. Should you guys carry on working as hard as you've been working? I'm really proud of you, you know. And I'm definitely in. I'm definitely interested in doing, doing this, you know. It's a big challenge for me, yeah. Reveal a person of unrelenting spirit and defiance. on a grass run with the football boots. There's, there's that run. There's all different in there. Is you run in the winter as well? Hell yeah. Floyd don't run away. Floyd is more like he's, he set traps for you. He's always been like that since he was an amateur. It's more like a, a counter puncher. And then he wears you down, and then if he gets the opportunity to knock you out, he knocks you out. You know, certain fighters like Carl Frosch get mixed up in it because that's the way they want to fight. And then after the fight, you know, you can start hearing the speech, let's go. 
different fighters out there. Ali used to run away on his back foot, you know, he used to jump, he used to box, Joe Frazier used to come forward. Um, you know, for myself, I prefer coming forward, you know, I don't really, because I don't, I don't know how to box going backwards. It's how you start as an amateur. And if you box on the back foot as an amateur, you're going to be boxing box back, back foot as a pro. But if you're a pressure fighter in the amateur, you're going to be a pressure fighter in the, in the pro game, because it's how you start, basically. When we were born, we just we were just driving going forward. We can't go backwards. It's not like I want to be a baby. You just go backwards. Um, but certain fighters prefer going back back foot. You know, boxing on the back foot, setting traps for you. And we're gonna say again, May Mayweather and uh, there's one more fighter. I forgot his name. Who does that? The same thing as well. And then afterwards, he starts coming forward. But we just for me, I like going forward putting pressure on the other fighter. But the other fighter don't want to go backwards because he has to because he don't know what's happening. It's a war. <laughs> when you get in the ring, it's a war. There's yeah. no, it's a war. It's a, there's nothing else to look at here, but it's a fighting game, but it's a war. You know? You can just feel, you can feel the fear when you're around them. The way the nervous energy, when they hold you in the, in the clinch, and the, they don't want to be there. They, they just want to like hurry up and just go home. Yeah. You feel it. I feel it every time when I find this and saying, guys, even inspiring it sometimes. Why? Well, it's, it's just boxing. It's put fear in people. It's like you in the 20, if you like 20 years ago, the second in the room with Mike Tyson. <laughs> You'd be like, yo, can you tell your friends, yes, yeah, I'm on it, but when you get in the ring there, <laughs> you start shaking boots. <laughs> It's the same thing with people. You can see it. You see the fear. Like this, when Mike Tyson used to fight guys, hit them with one punch, and then after they like, they don't want to be in there. They look at him like Jesus Christ. <laughs> they have to. They can't lose face. They can't. If there was, if there was way for them to just come out of the ring, and run in their car and just drive home, they would. <laughs> but there's twenty thousand people. They're watching, <laughs> so you can't really jump the ropes and run out. There's a joke when the guy is like, there's two guys digging for diamonds, and the other guy almost stands an inch away, and then he gives up. He gives up, he gives up for his minions, because it was right there at the diamond mine. And there's another guy who's hungry for it, he's just coming, coming. <laughs> and he gets it. So you can't give up. We can never give up on your dreams, you have to carry on. Go in there and just uh, and just do what you can do at that time. You can only spoil it for certain rounds, like first two rounds. You know, that's why you have to be very sharp and up on your guard. And then afterwards just break them down. You see, when you get to the top, yeah, there has to be some, there has to be people getting slaughtered. You know, these fighters who come along, they think they can do better, but they can't do better, they're only limited. And, uh, and then there's great athletes who train hard. You can be brave for that 20, 20 minutes. And then after, when you go back to your house and you by yourself, there's nothing happening <laughs> in your life. There's just injuries and you're damaged and you're scarred for life. Boxing, one thing with boxing is like, it's it's a form of art. It's like playing chess, it's like drawing a Picasso. And it's a black, it's a blank canvas. You know, and you just go give them a couple of paintbrushes 
and you have to come out with the best portrait out, out there. And certain fighters have done that, you know, who have retired on top, you know, Lennox Lewis, you know, Joe Kawasaki, Floyd, you know, they got given up blank covers and they've been drawing 24-7 and they've come out good. No reason to cheat, you know, you're getting in there with somebody else's son, why you, you, you take drugs and then you kill with somebody else's son, that's not fair. I don't believe in that. I just believe in the spirit and just doing it right and just giving it all your best. <coughs> So what time did you wake up? Four. Four? Yeah, yeah you're up at four. Oh, you hear that? Just about Yeah, it feels good. Yeah? You like it. Good. When it comes to eating, know that it's your right. Give yourself every opportunity. The way I feel is like uh, God gave me a gift, a gift and that's a, a gift with a lot of energy because when I was a little child and I was outside with my mother and I, I see things, I see big guys playing with the, with the ball or big guys uh, doing some skateboarding and I was not the child that was sees one thing and say oh I want to do that, I was the child I'm gonna try the soccer, I want to try this, oh I want to try that, I want to try the uh, skateboard. Everything I, w I was seeing, I wanted to try it. And that energy I have it now the same, because I do now Thai boxing. I want to do the next step to do some boxing. But if I see something else, I will not say no, I want to do that. I will say, yeah, I want to do that. So like, uh, judo or skateboarding or trying to jump from from something with a BMX I will do that every sport I see I like to try it come on man bang it out <laughs> mind the water yeah First. boom <gasps> Two. three Okay, the first step is and the die lever is a bit gewicht gewoon. Niet te hard, but gewicht. Snel, snel. Yes, that's it. Yes. Turn your hips into the top one. Keep the press, press with him. Make him fight now, make him fight now. Make him fight now, that's it. Prick him with your knees and trap a little bit. Prick him with your knees. 
Je moet dit anders gaan winnen. Now we go to deep water. Let's go. Technique. 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 Boy. 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 But give him something to think about, man. Try and come back. It's real. What's all the strength of these? Boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. For tempo and give him pressure. Seven, seven seconds. It's nothing. You good? Yeah. My my story's not a little bit different because I'm I'm I'm. I was born like in uh, Suriname, and you don't see a lot of extreme sports here. It's like me playing with sticks and shit, just, just like that. But as soon as I came here, I saw there's a lot of opportunity, and it felt like the quiet guy in me just jumped out like, ah, yes, finally, you know, I can do shit, you know. But uh, here I came here, I saw a lot of different kind of sports, a lot of different kind of opportunities, and I thought. Let's try fighting, because <laughs> fighting, fighting feels more feels like freedom. You know, I don't like sports that I have to do with a lot of other people, because I have to depend on what they're gonna do, how they're feeling. I just want to go to the extreme and do my my thing. You know. Push one speed. Come on, two. Fast, Come on, three. Yeah, good. Four. Come on. Eight. Nine. Sorry, eight. It's okay. Nine. And ten. I put it. There you go. One, two, three. Wow. Depends on what you do and what you can uh, deliver, you know. And I'm glad that we found in this uh, documentary we found a director that's just as crazy as us. <laughs> He's the same <laughs> he, man. He even has more energy than us, you know. Than the everybody. Guy does, does. Everybody. <laughs> Early in the morning, this guy just wakes up and starts waking everybody up like he, he was awake all day, you know? And he has, like, the endless, endless energy, and that just helps us also to drive to the the next possibility, the yeah. next opportunity. Because he is the same, man. Yeah. If you look at what he was doing, he came at the gym, he wants to fight. He never did some kickboxing, and he wants to try to fight, so he did it. And he gave the money to to guys in Bangladesh because they don't have clear water there. So the next thing he was doing was training pit bulls, and uh, everything he changed. And if I look at him, I think, hey, he has the same energy like me. Only he has it what more, because he's, he has, yeah, he did a lot of things. But if I look at him, I think at myself, yeah, I want to do the same. Man. I want to try everything. It's not only one thing. If I have success in box, I will search for something else to get more success. Come on, come on, come on. I want to see some skills. Hey, easy now. Okay, I said a light spa. The talent that these fighters have, but the lack of support that they have financially, and um, the country not even really support the, the, the sport that much, really. Bring that left hand back. Dangle that so long. There's a shot, body shot there. Don Charles, who I've known since I was a kid, 
and he he's risen to the top of his game and um, started to produce very interesting fighters to the point that all the media in London are always interested when he's on a mission to create another champion. So I thought that these boys, with their dedication, um, if they got together with Don Charles, it could be pretty interesting. And then I thought, to keep me occupied, I could film the process. Somebody's having a go at me, he's going, bit, bit, bit. He's telling me to slow down, I was going. <laughs> <laughs> We are blessed with power. What to do with it? Waste? Never. Nature won't let us. Together like the atoms we split and bounce. It looks like dispute. But look deeper. This is harmony. Method to madness, calm in unrest. The field has been hijacked for battle. We are obliging. Feel free. Feel free. We make fun of violence. Bismillah, come on, last one, last ten, let's go. All the way, good man, good man. All the way, all the way, all the way. Good man. And just carry on walking, yeah? Yeah. Come on, mosquitoes. I'm scared they're not going to bite you, man. I want speed, I want speed. Beautiful. Give me ten, go. Eight, seven, go back a little bit. Six, open up. Five, look up. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Hold it there. Ten. Breathe. Three, four, five. To train once a day shows interest to train. More than that, proves you're gifted. My name is Darren Dwayne Hammond. I'm 35 years young. I've had 16 fights, 14 wins, one disqualification, one loss. The first thing that got me interested in fighting was the silver screen, uh, watching Rocky. I think it was Rocky 2, II, Rocky 2, and you think, wow. Yeah. I just think it just captured everything. It captured what, what it captures in all young boys. My testosterone drove me to, to boxing, fighting. My uncle, had some sort of experience in boxing and he brought me to the first boxing gym and I went from there. I discovered that um, I have a lot of perseverance. And when I'm in the ring, I'm fighting with someone and it's that part of who wants it more. I know there's, there's issues in my life that I've had that he hasn't had the same issues. He ain't got the same hunger, he has not felt the same pain. There's times in that ring when I say to myself, I'd rather die before, before I, I let you beat me. I'm thinking about death, I'm thinking about life and death situation. And I think the other person in the head, they just want to be, uh, they just want stardom. I just want to win for stardom. Or I just want to win for, for, for money and fame. Subconsciously, I think I release, I release certain fears as well. I mean, certain fears that I never, I didn't, I didn't tackle as a child. Or I'll tackle as a team. Not, not defending myself certain times. Not taking certain opportunities to fight certain people and, because I was afraid. But there's a part of me that really wanted to do it. And I don't know, that fear, that fear. And there's, there's a thin line between fear and, and crazy anger. And I could just use fear as my friend and then override it with that, with that crazy anger. Do you know what I think as well? It's like, um, th that attitude in life, it hasn't actually helped me directly, but I can see how it could help me. Um, I'm gonna say something quite weird. I mean, it's in like, um, it's like, 
do or die, make or break. I'm going for it. I'm gonna go for it. That, that's what a lot of people need in life, especially in London. London is a is a city. I'm from a small town. I'm from Bristol. The London mentality is all about is about now. I need me. It's all about me. Even getting on the tube. If you don't hustle and get to the front, you're gonna you're gonna miss the tube. It's just a different kind of mentality. But um, even before I started the boxing thing, I had that aggressive attitude just coming to London. Because when I came to London, I came to London to get away from Bristol, where certain situations i.e. my life being threatened and things like that, bad stuff happening in Bristol. So I left Bristol and I came to London and it was like the recession hit and I needed a job. And it was just like, even just getting a job was aggressive. So from then on, I said to myself, right, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to believe in myself. I'm gonna have to believe I'm better than anyone else. Because if I don't have a job here, I'm gonna be messed up. I'm not gonna have no job. I'm not gonna be able to eat because I was literally on the bread line. I believe in destiny. And I felt that I, I felt that I've read my destiny. And I say to myself, before I even agreed to take this fight, I know it's my destiny to win. So when the beginning ain't going well, I'm going, okay, this is supposed to be just part of it. I just got to overcome this. I've already got this as a little small obstacle. Well, obviously, destiny is saying, right, well, you can have it, but you have to get over this first. So when I'm when, when I'm going through that 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 I don't know that obstacle in the in the fight. I'm going, I don't care whatever happens, I'm just gonna just go, I'm just gonna bite on my gum shield and come back harder, come back stronger. The main belief is, is that I believe I'm special. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm, I'm in the process of creating the book. But to be honest, I, I don't really know what chapter I'm on, I don't know how many more chapters are gonna go, but I know that I'm in, I'm in the process, me and Spencer Fear are in the process of creating something really special. For me, I think it's all to do with this, the, the mental side of it, the mental, the psychology side of it is that the person who would more want to box is definitely fighting with knowledge, he's fighting with skill. The person who's fighting and getting drawn into a tear-up is emotionally involved. Um, if, you're, if you're emotionally involved, then you're not strategic. It's not a strategic move. And in respect of having a strategy, if you're having a strategy, yeah, your strategy should be to try and outwork the other person or try and hit them without them hitting you. And then emotionally being involved could go back on your, your strategic plan in a certain respect. You know, you can't have a strategy where you can outfight someone. So, so therefore, say if someone has a bit more boxing skill than what you have, yeah, and you know they're not as they're not as rough. Maybe you might have to use it as a strategy. You have to then you know use your emotion to then have up to be aggressive and, and have a terror. Some kids w w were not dropped as a child. Yeah, and some kids were. Some kids had a, had a when they say rough paper round, some kids never. I'd just say, I'd bring it all down to upbringing. That kid from the street who's had it tough, he, 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 he was, was grit. Maybe his dad punched him and beat him up, or he used to get beat up at school, but then, he, but then he took it in a way that he always started fighting back and he was just being a tough kid from, kid from a kid. That kid would be the kid that in the ring would bite on his gum shield and won't give up. The kid, that was moddy coddled and looked after well and got given knitted jumpers at Christmas and stuff like that, yeah? That kid, but then he was a boxer, but he was a classy boxer, blah, 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 I'm a bit of a pretty boy, straight nose, yeah? Um, yeah, excellent boxer, yeah, excellent timing, excellent rhythm, he's got a bit of a punch. That kid, that kid, when it comes to the heat time, the heat, turn on the heat, I think that kid would, would bail out.
We are not inherently vicious. The creation of a vicious breed is in reality the creation of an image. <laughs> Wait a second, man. Uh, <laughs> the press conference has been held tomorrow, so I'm going to invite you guys to come and get an insight of how we do it in at the top level. We're in the we're in the premiership of boxing, you understand, yeah? So you can get an insight of what to come, what to expect when you make the great, when you now make the crossover to become a boxer. This is exactly the treatment you'll be getting once you get to this level of a uh, championship level. Um, so I'm, I'm going to invite you guys to also meet the promoter who we possibly could be um, working with, provided you make, make the great. Is getting in the ring face to face, you against somebody else, and then after it's over, you see who does the talking. The talking is bullshit. Fights is fights. And then we've got a great undercard featuring some of the best young fighters around the country. The undefeated Frank Bullioni, Callum Johnson, Bradley Saunders, Bradley Skeet, Billy Morgan, Tom Baker, Billy Morgan, and uh, Anthony Morgan, sorry, and Jerry Taylor. Get Derek, There's a lot of things you can read into it, but we give the benefit of the doubt. In great shape, you look good, you know, you're clean, which is very important, you know, because sports is sports, but you have to be marketable, endorsement and advertising and stuff, yeah? So it's not just about being. Uh, a fantastic boxer. You have to have uh, the ones who are the best. They have everything: good looking, good personality. They can fight. Yeah. So it's a whole package. You've got the whole package, and that's why I'm interested in um, getting involved to to train you. Okay. Fantastic. Oh shit, you have a lot of Look at Yeah, but that's for all of us, man. Yeah. I'll just eat it after training. I'm going to put more in there, actually. I need some more in there.
Yes. Did you get it? Yeah, man, what are you saying? Boom. You think my name is? <laughs> Oh, your little stomach, eh? Chocolate. Mustard. Your favourite. Oh, no, it's not my favourite. I'm gonna cry again. You don't have to put it on, man. Yeah. I'm too! Hey, there's no problem, eh? Good stuff. Good stuff. The time has come. You said you could. It's time to wake up and fulfill your dreams. So let's get it. Let's get it. How you doing? You alright? Well, how you doing? I can't shake you, I can't hug you, <laughs> I just do that. Peace. Where's the man himself? Welcome, brother. Welcome, yeah? Nice to meet you. When I train, I'm not a Thai boxer. Yeah. I'm a karate fighter, but whenever I have to train, I always watch boxing. Yeah. Okay. Because I study all the my Tyson move and one of my favorites was Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard, yeah. Copy him all the exceptional time. movement. All the, yes. Movement. It's, that's yeah. why I'm not a boxer, I'm not a box coach or teacher, but I like it so much. That's why I combine it with kicking and boxing. If you don't mind me saying, from my observation, when you were doing the pads with the boys, there's a lot of boxing coaches can't even do the type of pad work you do in boxing. So I've, today, you know, life is about learning. Yes. I've seen what you're doing. I'm going to, if you don't mind, <laughs> I'm going to borrow some of the stuff that I saw. There's a lot of good stuff when you're doing the pad with the boys, you know? And for me, I want to always improve in what I'm doing. So I, I, I see something. If I like it, I take it and make it, make it my own. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah, like I said, this is a very interesting project and um, I'm really looking forward to the outcome when we conclude where the boys, the two boys are concerned to turn them over to uh, using the background of the martial arts to, to merge it with the, with the boxing. They've got very good hands. Their feet is exceptional, you know, their kicks is exceptional. But being very interesting to see when they just only have to use their hands, be very interesting. But your pad work is, like I said, it's very, very good. Yeah. We, we're not boxing, my fighters. Mm -hmm. We just hit back. Sure. And that's why we have to learn the boxing game. It's almost like having two languages. I admire somebody who comes from a different country who can already speak their language and also they can inherit yes. a language of where they're living. So that's a, that's a double skill. So that's where I look at kickboxers. They can already do what they do very well and they also can punch. Whereas the other way around, although I'm very pro-boxing, a boxer can only punch, he can't, he can't kick, so he only speaks one language, which is the, the hand, he speaks yes. with his hands. So I admire kickboxers, basically. Um, Most of the kickboxing schools and gyms in Holland, mm -hmm. they can kick or clinch or box. But the way I train, I want to do the whole spectrum. Oh, the whole spectrum, yeah. From my findings, modern boxing, 
this never used to happen in the, in the olden days, like in the, in the 50s and in the 60s. Everybody fought everybody. Yes. But unfortunately, the business side of the of the of boxing has taken over. Yes, yeah. Of course. Um, so what we find in boxing is a lot of fighters are protected. They're protected. Okay. For... Basically, the, the pain public are being cheated. Course, yeah. Because... In contrast to the martial art, mm -hmm. MMA, kickboxers, you guys fight each other fight. regular. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in boxing, they're too bothered about protecting unbeaten records. When the real test comes for that protected fighter, they always fail miserably, yeah? Because promoters, because they've got big television contracts to, yes. to protect, there's a lot of money involved. So they want to bring people who are not on the same level, mm -hmm. yeah, to compete against their investment. The audience is being cheated. Of course. Right, I think this is spoiling our sport. Like I said, I admire you guys because you fight each other. Okay, and there is, of course there's money involved, but unfortunately uh, in boxing it's, it's, it's more about the money. Um, whereas in the olden days, it wasn't like that at all. Everybody fought everybody. If you're a champion and you, you think you're the beat, best, yes, you, you have, have, to have to beat everybody. You have to beat everybody. You don't avoid nobody, you know, so, hey, I hope it improves. Lucien, if I may also add, you know, I really, like I said earlier on, I'm honored to, to be um, associated with yourself doing this project. Um, also, very nice and kind of you to allow two of your students to participate, to cross them over, to turn them over to boxing. Because if you ask me to do the same, to bring two of my boxers to cross over to, to do uh, the uh, kickboxing, I don't believe I'll be successful in convincing mm -hmm. boxers to do the other way. Do you understand? Yes, uh, so I really admire you and your students to uh, 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 allowing and agreeing to participate in this. I see you as an uh, opportunity, a door. Mm -hmm. And I'm al always was looking for the door. So I see. So it, well, fantastic. It's not, that's it's not difficult to that's say music, yes. That's music to my ears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's music to my ears because um, I'll gladly, gladly, my door is always open for you, my friend. Because like I said, you're a legend in your, in your field. Um, I'm an up and coming, you know. I'm still rising in what I'm doing. I'm still learning my game. Um, I want to be the best, basically. Yes, sir. Pleasure. Yes. Yes. Don't you want me to talk? Don't you? That's okay. Deep body shot. Push. Push. Never stop. Serious. That's very serious. Master at work. Left to right cross. Yeah? This is there. This is there. Right? And carry on. Hook. This is this. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Roll. One, two. Roll. One, two, three. Yeah? You got it? Okay. Three. There. Roll. Hey. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Come on. There. There. There it is. Block two. Shorten that. It's too long. Yeah? Block two. Wicked. Yeah, again, come on. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. Double jump, cross. Good, one more time. One more time. Right, let's go. Cut! It's a battle, man. You heard Lucin. He said, boxing is about, I listen to your thing. Move, yeah? That's what it's about, movement. Okay? Yes, 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 yes. Hey! Again, come on, sharp. Yes, 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 yes. Go. 
Yes, yes, yes. Better. Land it. Yeah? You may look at it. You're not looking at it. You're looking at me. Look at it. Yeah? Good. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Finish here. Yes, 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 yes. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Good boy. Good. 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 Good boy. Land it. Get yeah. stay tight, compact. Yeah? Go. There. Go. I'm coming to you. So go. Bring me in. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that again. Come on. Yes. Superman. There. Hey. Did you see that? Yes, there. Finish on the hook. Move with me. Move, move. Yeah, move with me. Yeah, excellent. Shoot, right hand. Shoot. Thank you. Free your mind yes. and your ass will follow. Nah. <laughs> All right? Free your mind and your ass will follow. Let's go. You know who said that? George Clinton. Yeah, man. Let's go. Yes. Away. Remember? Free your mind and your ass will naturally follow. The ass is not following, man. The ass is not following. Come on, man. Get in with these. Ah. Take Get a break. Please. Come. Woo. Go down, yeah? Good. Get down. Good boy. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Your ass followed. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's try. Okay? Yeah. One, two. Unless you got ADHD. Like you. Yeah. 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 The man calls me up this morning. All right, son. I said, John, I'm tired. Uh, we'll see you there in 15 minutes. Geezer. <laughs> yeah. And I'm only just getting used to it. <laughs> you're all right, man. You're all right. Tough. You're all right, man. Giz is a legend. He's a genius. This kid is a genius. I still call him a kid because I'm literally brought him up. You know? Rhythm. 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 See what I'm saying? Yeah? You can see what I'm thinking. Is it good? Just when you sit down, I have to laugh. Let's go. Oi! Beautiful. There you go. There you go. Yeah? Good man. Come on, man. Pressure him. There it is. Now you can't more. And you got me. All right? Excellent. Well done. If this touch your head, yeah. it's a punch. So don't let this touch your head, okay? Pop! Pop there. So you switch your waist. Boom! There you go. Good boy. That's okay. That's cool. I'm 
fighting or this toughness is the universe and if I betray the universe then I may as well die certain people certain people are willing to die other people ain't and that's you get found out in a boxing in, in, when you're fighting you, you'll get found out and that's what happens on, on that that happens on loads of times loads of times loads of occasions where people you will get found out everybody goes back to Jake Lamar right um, and he had that classic fight in 1951 with Sugar Ray Robinson where Ray Robinson like battered the hell out of him and he didn't go over from it and he, he prided himself on that toughness. You have loads of tough guys if you've got to like up to, to, to current days, guys who are just warriors, um, Otorio Getty, Carl Thompson, these men, you know what I mean? Danny Williams fought with one arm against Mark Potter. His arm was hanging off. He dislocated his shoulder. But there was something inside him. He said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to quit. There's a Greek word called dokami. And in, in the word dokami means like under the heat of fire, like when you're, when you're trying to make like a sword or anything. And you like the time when, when the fire is its most fierce is when the metal will shine its brightest. You know what I mean? And then they'll take it out, they put it in water and you, you, you build the steel. And there are certain people who, who, at the heat of fire, when it's on you, that's when they shine their brightest. You know what I mean? Uh, you go back to Chris Eubank, getting knocked down by Michael Watson and thinking to yourself, what else do I do? Do you know what I mean? And he could have quit at that time. He could have. And nobody would have been upset with him. You know what, <laughs> you know what? You gave us a hell of a fight, Chris. No, he sucked it up. So there's certain people who get purged in that fire and that is being baptised under fire, where you think, right, that's when I'm going to shine my brightest. The other people can't take their heat. And then, then they fall. At the time, you had this thing called the murderer's roll. And the murderer's roll goes from, like, the, the late 30s up to the 50s, where black fighters would not get opportunities to fight for titles. Archibald was one of the... Even though it took him, like, nearly 20 years as a professional to fight for a light heavyweight title, he was an old man when he fought for the title. But yeah, he could punch, he was a ferocious puncher. In the boxing history, he goes down as one of the hardest punches ever. And Archie Moore thought, well, I'm, I'm world champion now. So you know what? I'm willing to die here because I'm not even meant to get the opportunity. You know what I mean? I'm not even meant to get the opportunity. So that's the difference. When, you, when you've had to strive and think like, rah, I want to get something and then you get it, it's even going to work two ways for you. Even gonna, I've strived so hard to get it and they get it and then they lose all interest. They did, I'm, I'm, I've arrived. But well, you got other people who think, I've arrived, but I want more. Because that arrival is not the arrival, that's just the, that's just the door opening. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Archie Moore, um, fantastic fighter, man. Great fighter. These things can be, can be branched off and be adapted into any walk of life. Because fighters are fighters. This sport that we're in, that everybody inside of it has a purpose. Everybody's a preacher who's a trainer. You know what I mean? And that's the truth. You are a preacher. Why are you a preacher? You are a teacher also, but you are preaching to impregnate something inside of a professional athlete that can go the extra mile. And they were saying like, boy, I don't want to let down my, I don't want to let down my church right now. I don't want to let down my mosque, you know, I don't want to. And that's what drives you on. You know, some people, you know, like we see like, oh, oh I can't take this person. He's too cocky. He loves himself too much. Well, who else is he going to love you? Uh, on the rules, who else is meant to love you? Who else is meant to love you? Who, you're meant to love yourself. Bottom line is, you are. Any, 
anyone is out there, you are meant to love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, who else is going to love you? You know what I mean? And like, you was in your past, you was on a, you, and you had a drug addiction, yeah? Oh, no power to you, but everyone's got a drug addiction. You know what I mean? It's just maybe not cocaine. It's just maybe not, it's not, it's not weed or it's not heroin. Everybody has a drug addiction. So the biggest drug addiction that you could take is life itself. And say, right, well, now you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to be an adrenaline junkie. I'm just going to be a life junkie. I'm going to be a life junkie to the fact that, right, I'm just going to be the best me. And it's, it's cool because, like, just like you're saying, like, there's been times where I've sat down and some, some devilish thoughts have come in my head. And I know I could easily administer those devilish thoughts. I could administer them, but then the thing, that, the underlying thing that stops you from doing it, I swear down, it's like I'm just about to fall asleep and I'll hear my dad call me and I'm like, kind of, I can hear my dad. Now, maybe it is my own psychology that's the like, hurrah. But what would your dad think? You know what I mean? Because my dad's passed away, it's been nine years now. And that's the thing that fixes me up. I'm saying, boy, not only that, I've got my little daughter. So I'm saying, well, I can't really be in no foolishness right now. Well, I'm going to look after my daughter if I'm not here. Do you know what I mean? So you need something. Yeah, you need something that is, that you, you can feel it and it's inside you and, and it's the thing that, that channels loads of different things about you and it changes you from, from just that small step, just that small step, which it changes your whole life, man. Rocky Marcello wasn't the greatest technical guy. Rocky Marcello was actually useless. I'm um, seriously, technically, it was useless, but he beat some of the greatest technicians. You know what I mean? Jojo Walcott, I don't even care if they say, oh, well, Jojo Walcott was old at a time. But no, Jojo Walcott was a superb tactician and technician. You know what I mean? Superb. You know, everyone's doing the shoulder roll now. Jojo Walcott was a guy that would do the shoulder roll and, like, could take breaks in the middle of the ring. Like, he'd fight you and then go on little walkabouts, recuperate his energy, and then come back and throw him, throw him back, fight punches at you and Rocky Marcelo knocked him out. Rocky Marcelo beat one of the greatest light heavyweight champions. He beat two great because he beat Archimor. You know what I mean? He beat Archimor and he which was his last pro fight. And he also he also beat um Ezra Charles. Ezra Charles beat Archimor three times. Ezra Charles was superb. Ezra Charles could do things like even today I'll watch and I'll say wow that is incredible. Rocky Marcelo weren't that talented. Muhammad Ali, by his own admission, said Rocky Marcelo wasn't great. Muhammad Ali said Rocky Marcelo wasn't great. You know what I mean? He wasn't great, but you know what I mean? he beat old guys and da da da. Yeah, but that man had something in him because technically he was useless. You know what I mean? Technically, but he would carry on fighting. There was a time when Rocky Marcelo was fighting and his nose was slit down the middle. They just closed it up and he just carried on fighting, knocked out the guy. You don't build those kind of, you cannot build that. You cannot say, oh, let's just be around tough guys and let's see if it rubs off. That is not, you can't build that. That is something that you're born with, you know? That you're saying, you know what? Like I'm saying, that's purging in the fire. No matter what, as a guy in there, I am prepared to die. You decide to yourself where you want to be, you know? And it's not about getting a W at the end of it. No, because the W at the end of it is from once you've, you've got to engage on this thing to say, right, I want to go do this thing. That is when you get the W. The W is that you're engaging it. And once you start engaging it, then you can expand on the W. It's like a tree. You put, the, you put these little seeds in, as you put the little seeds in, and you get the photosynthesis from the sun, and you're, and you're planting this stuff, and then it starts to grow, and it germinates. And as it germinates, that's when you say, well, what, 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 what actually are we building here? And then you can branch onto so many different things. And this is life. And it's no better, is it, shown than, than in the boxing. Why should the next generation have to fight the fights I have fought. I'm a good fighter, right? What's your name? The future, the present, the past. <laughs> I like that. It's an art. We don't look at it as a fight, it's an art. There is an element of fight involved, but we, we approach it from a, a, an artistic point of direction. The whole choreography, the movement, the mental side of it, obviously the fighting part of it. <laughs>
soon as you come out, you're fighting. As soon as you enter this world we live in, it's a fight. And when I'm in the ring, believe it or not, like the last thing I think about is, is the, the, the physical side of things. Obviously, the, the bottom line is that you're in a fight, it's a survival, as harsh as it sounds. But when I'm in there, I'm thinking about time and distance, angles. It's, it's, it's creativity. It's, you get a stimulus and you respond to it. It's just, you, the last thing you think of is consciously hurting somebody. That's me personally. Everybody else has their different ways about going, going about boxing. But me, when I'm in there, I'm having fun. But of course, there's, there's a time when you, you make a conscious decision that, that you're going to have to either dig deep or, or, or respond to, to a situation where you might be suffering or you might be hurting. But you just have to dig deep. You, you, you look within yourself. That's when you look within yourself as a person. That's where your character comes from. And whether you draw from your, your, how you suffered in the past or you can, I, I draw from positivity. Personally, I, I, haven't, I haven't suffered a lot as a, as, a, as, a, as a young man growing up in this world. I draw from the sacrifice my father has made and, and people around me to allow me to be where I am today. And that's what gives me motivation to be able to, to uh, deal with them testing times. <laughs> From, a, from dis the discipline that it takes to the sacrifices that I have to make. Just, um, obviously, to, to live the lifestyle of, a, of an athlete, I can't drink. I don't like to drink anyway. So it happens my father brought me up in that way. But as a, as a person myself, yeah, drinking, smoking, going out, they're all things that you have to put to one side. They're secondary. They don't make you as a person. So I don't see, I don't see as much of a loss. It doesn't make me who I am. So. I'll happily put that to one side and focus on what I believe is important to me. So yeah, boxing, boxing has influenced my life massively, massively. It's given me that grounding to be able to approach things in what I like to be is the right manner. Yeah, I've only just started embarked on my journey. I've got a long way to go and I find new things about myself every day. From, from fight to fight, from training session to training session, I'm always learning something about myself. Like before I started boxing, I loved it, but I didn't realize how mentally exhausting it would be. Although I'm a very analytical person. I'm very observant, I'm always weighing up the pros and cons and, and sometimes I do look at what the, the negatives could be and I, it, it's, it's very testing, it's very, very testing. It's definitely helping me find out a lot of things about myself that under the, under the conditions that boxing puts me in, I'm learning a lot about myself where I wouldn't learn maybe working in an office or doing something else. So yeah, definitely, I, I'd say it's more... Yeah, it's a journey rather than, I don't think I've, there's a destination, I don't think it's ever going to end. I'll be learning throughout, throughout my time, throughout my career. I don't think there'll be a, a definitive point where I can look back and be like, oh yeah, I've, I've learned who I am as a person. I think we always, we always find out new things about ourselves. There'll always be a new environment or a new, something that I'm subject to that will, that will change my opinion on myself and on, on other things as well. Boxing is always perceived as a thuggish sport. So you can imagine the type of characters that walk through these doors. Yeah, throw that right hand. Make yourself bigger. It's not just about physical, it's about you start to learn about human beings all different characters. And yes, um, it's helped immensely. I've helped a lot of people even develop my own self. He's just embarked on his um, boxing career and without me being biased, him being my son, he'll be quite, I think he's gonna, we're about to see something pretty special. But that aside, the character that is developed through, again, the disciplines of being an athlete, the discipline um, I, in I install into other kids who also have come into contact with me all through the times that I've been in this gym here. Yeah, I've helped a lot of a number of kids who their parents always thanking me like their characters. I've, I've built, you build characters, good characters. And that's, for me, that's what I get out of it. Seeing these kids who would otherwise maybe have gone aloof, would have become reckless and menace to society through doing this sport, the discipline they've gained have helped them to become better citizens and better persons in life.
reinforce it or remind them if they've forgotten the discipline you've already prepared over a period of time because you can only remind them remember and then the human brain the way it works muscle memory bang and you remember remind them of all the sufferings they've gone through through preparation five a.m. runs exactly all the runs early hour run morning runs all the hardness all the sacrifices they would have made to come to that point it's a very complex thing to do i would say it's about 70 percent mental So we'll practice it. One, two, three, four, slip, slip, and we'll cross. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. Yeah. One more. You, you, you reading it? Serious? Yeah. So, one, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. Huh? Bang! Does it release right. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish it. Right. One, two, three, four. Slip, slip. 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 Watch. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, three, three four, slip, slip, slip. slip. Boom! Alright, cool. Yeah, so you do it twice, and on the third time. Three times. You go back. How much you want? My strength comes from within, from from knowledge of self. I there will be a day I'm sure that I'll be dragged into a trench and I'll have to dig deep and I'll find something within myself that will allow me to continue. But the way I look at it right now is I try and embrace pain. When the pain comes, I'll try and embrace it. Of course, you don't experience pain. It's, it's a foreign thing. It doesn't happen very often. So when it comes your way, it's like, wow, what's going on here? Like, how am I going to react? But when you learn to embrace that, that feeling, you'll be fine. You'll be fine and stay positive. Positivity is my key. I'm a very, I got a feel of energy and vibe. So as long as I'm happy and I stay positive, even in times of suffering, at the end of the day, I'm in there doing what I enjoy to do. I'm, I, I chose to do this. It's no one forced me to do it. So there's, why should I all of a sudden be scared or, or be intimidated or worry about the pain or worry about what's going wrong? I just have to remember what I'm good at, who I am, where I'm from, what I've done, and the rest, the rest will work out. Yes. No sugar cliches. It's very difficult to say whether a fighter is going to be a, how you said, a real tough fighter. It's hard to say. Because all of them are human beings and sometimes it's a small thing that makes them decide to quit. It can be his heart is broken or something else. And most of the time, it's hard to break them. A good beating can break them as well, not the body break inside, then they quit. But most of the time, when they want to quit, then it's us, our job as trainer to talk to them. Because when the moment they try to quit, it's some simple, small words, and they go on. Then they get enough energy again to start. And also it's some small thing that make them quit, but it's hard to say. Because in the beginning, when we're in a gym, you can't say who's the real fighter. Because most of I have I, I used to have a fighter, he was very good killing everybody in the gym, but he couldn't fight in the ring, he couldn't, so it's, it's very hard to, to see. It's the inside, because some people, they say, no, this beating was too much, I can't take it. I, I, I can't face my, ch my child or my mother, the guy beat me up, I did nothing back. And some people say, okay, he just beat me up, he's stronger. It's, it's the character of you, you want to quit or not. Because like, if you are the special forces, you, some, some people, when they have to walk the whole day, some people, with maybe 10 miles they stop, they quit, they don't want to walk. And some people, they walk 100 miles, they don't, they don't quit. It's the inside, the character. So most of them, it's a gift, they're born like that. But if you follow the training of the special forces, they know how to change the people to be like that, not to quit. 
but it takes sometimes long time, long. It's a long road, hard road. I'm so happy with God, he make about five billion people. So if you want to quit, okay, there's five billion more. That's my attitude now. Before I was trying, trying, but then you see that you waste your time. Now in the beginning of training, we do a lot of like uh, touching, touching. You touch me 10 times, I touch you 10 times, not hard. And when they like the game, like that, then we go hard. And then, so they, they mind if I tell them, let's say, if I touch you 10 times, you need to touch me as well, or 10 or 11 times, you know, with the gloves. And we, so we started, and it's not hard, and they like the game. They, I, I, let's say, I try to make them uh, hooked to them. And then they don't mind if you hit them sometimes hard, and the, now you hit them two times. Three times. And so you, they grow into the system. It's just a system. But don't start too hard. The first day, or the first year, you'll break them. I'm not trying to break them, I try to build them. I'm just like a tank, and I just keep on coming, hit them, come back, and kick them, and uh, how do you say that? I try to really break them, and they have to get up, and everybody around the screen, come on, come on. And so the whole group is, is put some special character in them. They cannot quit, because we don't accept to quit. We never surrender. And we tell them, when we fight, I don't throw the towel in the, into the ring. We don't do that. Don't let him, because he punched you two times, you, you get smaller. Stay the same or try to grow. If you aim, aim on an elephant, you only see the elephant. You don't see the lion and the tiger behind you. Sure. And he's aiming, he tried to... Left <laughs> cross, left cross. You don't see the other things. How can you change that? You have to listen to me. <laughs> he's, sometimes he's not coachable in the ring. Mm. You have to be coachable. When I step, step back, Why do you go. think that is? I don't know, man. Sometimes yeah. it's like... It's all out. It's I'm like, thinking, okay, you make a fucking plan. He's, mm -hmm. going to the, he's going to into the ring and he changed his plan, I want to kill the guy. No, if no. you kill, that, will, that means you work with your heart. You have sure. to work with your brains, right. man. Yes. I want to kill. The guy kills you. Yeah. <laughs>
Fear makes you afraid of things that may never be real. Life is an amazing, an amazing story. And I've come to know that a lot of stuff that you go through in your childhood and your reactions to those things, when you look back, have ended up being kind of like the symbolism of what you need to address in yourself. And some of the tools that I used in negative ways have ended up being the tools I can use for positivity. As a kid, a lot of my identity was taken away from me and was um, served back to me through a lot of abuse and violence at school and at home. And it was served back to me in a way that when I make a calculation that I must be irrelevant and insignificant and of no value. The repercussions of that being a human being, which is, um, I believe that we don't just lay down that easily. We try to compensate and turn around that lie. And something inside me, I think, knew that I was a lot more than what my environment was treating me like. So I became, as a repercussion, obsessed with identity and respect to the point that it grew like a virus into narcissism, you know, like in order for me to identify, I was constantly looking at my own reflection and on some sort of mental loop that I'm the most beautiful thing on the planet. And if anybody disagreed, I used my first school of learning, which was violence. But because this is something that I learned beneath all of that, I was like any other normal child, which is loving. So there was always a conflict between what my identity needs were and what my soul needs were. And my, while pursuing my identity needs with these violent temper tantrums and trying to be the center of attraction and nobody else's life mattered but my identity and my definition, my soul was miserable with this pathetic way that I was behaving. And my soul's ego, so to speak, overrid my narcissism. You get put into situations, especially on the street and in children's homes and stuff like that. Nobody really tells you you're gonna have a fight. They surround you and make you fight. And I found in these scenarios that when I was made to fight and I fought back, these people that were starting to fight really didn't want to get <clears throat> in as deep as me. I.e. that when it turned tables and they became victimized by my superior will to live, they quit. So that became an interest of mine about why, what is it in a person that makes them not quit? What is it in a person that makes them constantly fight? I had a lot of drug addiction in my life and alcoholism and stuff, you know, because of, I believe, because of not really liking who I was in a base, so I was kind of constantly trying to alter my state as a repercussion and an echo of my childhood. to the point that I drew all over my body to change and change the world's perception of me, to be unique, to be different. But during this process, I also noticed that I had an unbelievable will, even in the confusion and in the wrong, I had an unbelievable will. 
And I'd been hurt a few times on the street, stabbed multiple times, knocked out. And instead of folding, I went to gyms and I studied fighting because of this one-minded mentality of, I have to win. It's not that I lost, it's that I've, I, I need more skill. But it never passed my mind that I should quit or learn how to run. It was like, I just need to be a better fighter. So when I was studying fighting, I got amongst fighters and I saw other people with this amazing will to win, regardless of the situation. And in my fight, in my drug addiction, and my sometimes indirect suicidal tendencies, by the way I was polluting my body, was on a slow death, with smoking and all these things. I found that will can actually save your life because what I did was I internalized this will and I learned from the Muslims there was a, a saying from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, peace be upon him it said the strong man is not the man that wrestles another man it's the man that wrestles with himself yeah so you've, back, you've got your base back back to cross him that's it so that timing what we want is that ba -boom. you know so it's one two let that low kick go the kick's cutting in lovely but make sure that that little one two, that hop step into it, yeah? Step across it now. One three, good. And again. Three, good. Now I want a running low kick. One two, three. And get at this. Three, good. Lovely. What's that balance? And back. Yeah, thank you. Lovely. And again. Three. Get that hand up. Throw it. Yeah, lovely. And again. Beautiful. Pivot a little bit more. Lovely. And again, show me. And again. One more, one more, one more. And I was also fascinated by, no matter what I wanted to do, even though I didn't have any schooling, I don't have any schooling in film, but now I'm a directing film. This willpower is, is um, my friend. And it actually, from the perspective of studying myself as a will, as an intent, as a conviction, it destroyed all the negative perceptions I had of my personality. I become bigger than my personality, deeper than my personality. I became a living being that deserves to live. So that's why I wanted to make this film called Tear Up, because I believe every single human being has it. And I believe that if I could take my focus away from being what people would accept as somebody nice, which is what I was obsessive about for most of my life, and becoming a slave to them and being accepted by them, I thought if people could get in touch with their energy and their will to live, it's a far more beautiful perception of yourself and you can just go to hell with what everybody else thinks about me. It's better I know what I feel about me. And being as that I've been around people that have killed themselves directly and indirectly with their bad habits because of lack of self-love, I want to spread this 
message of will and show people with willpower in order to encourage everybody else that might be lost to focus on their will because it's in us all. You know, it's funny how just in a little change of perspective and focus that the life that I thought was full of traps and, and minefields for me is now a playground because my focus right now is not quitting and life constantly gives me the opportunity to practice that. My focus right now is to be well-mannered, keep my temper in check. So now every day, because this is my sport, I'm glad for the opportunities to go to bed a winner. And every day is a new battle to do that. And so every time I get tested, I start laughing because I'm like, it doesn't come like, oh, what, another test. It helps that I purified my diet, so I've got a lot of energy for these tests, which makes me laugh even more because I'm prepared. But um, I just laugh because it's like, it's, it's a hobby. It's great. My life's become a hobby to keep myself centered. So there's happiness in this task too. And even during the making of this film, it had another title because the original title was called Turnover, which was about two kickboxers which come from one discipline turning over into another discipline of boxing and their journey to that but during that process as all human beings we have a lot of different things happening in our life the two fighters were distracted with other things like one of them had to go on holiday and they're both kickboxing so they were a bit you know they started to get fights and it didn't fit in with the schedule so it was funny i was like okay here it is again another opportunity so what I found within that process, I was given a gift for a new title, which is Tear Up, which is about come out fighting, don't quit. When you're being victimized, grit your teeth, bite down, put your nose to his nose or the obstacle's nose and start battling. So when I was faced with this, that the two principles of the film had so many other distractions outside and it was like, you know, run out of money and, and, and time to finish this film. I'm like, well, here's the opportunity, finish the film. And within trying to finish the film, I found that I'm in gyms every day, which is about people that are struggling every day with, with fulfilling their dreams and, and not quitting until they see it come to fruition. So the movie is now called Tear Up, which is about that nature, about not quitting. This whole film was done by two people, me, and the cameraman who also edits and we edit together. And of course, plenty of people said you can't do a movie like this just with two of you. So again, it was like another opportunity and the cameraman Oligar came on this journey to find in himself the intestinal fortitude to keep going and not quit and see things through. So even the making of this film stays on the same line of being inspirational and encouraging everybody that this can be really as fun as it is for me. I mean, the obstacles in life are just sparring partners. To sharpen you as a tool and as a human being and never let anybody take away your gift of patience. Us.